Azar Ali uh, took some criticism for his captaincy up at Old Trafford and Joe Root admitted he made some mistakes as well. So who would be a captain? Michael Atherton. Thanks very much, Wardy. Yeah, we've got uh, an interesting situation in this series because we've got Azar Ali, as you mentioned, who's right at the start of his captaincy career for Pakistan. He's only captained in seven matches. And Joe Root, who is 42 matches in now, believe it or not. We sometimes think of Root as quite a young, inexperienced captain. 42 matches puts him right near the top of the number of games that uh, somebody has ever captained for England in, in Test cricket. Um, so we're going to talk captaincy, all things captaincy, really, in a more general sense. Uh, and to do so, uh, a couple of guys here. What, NASA, who is regarded as a pretty fine England captain, I think. And Shane Warne, who is often described as, along with Keith Miller, the best captain that Australia never had. I mean, you did captain in ODI cricket, 11 matches, I think, which you won 10, but not in test match cricket. Given the length and stretch of your career and everything that you achieved in the game, is it a matter of regret that you didn't captain Australia in Test cricket? Uh, I, I thought captaincy always brought out the best of me. I was lucky enough to captain Victoria at an early age here at Hampshire, Rajasthan Royals, captain Australian one day cricket. So all through my juniors, I was always captain too. But I, I look back at my career and I was so lucky to play under some wonderful captains, some of the best there's ever been in the national game. Alan Border. Um, was a terrific captain. And then Mark Taylor, I think, was the best captain I played under and probably the best captain of my time, I thought, because of many reasons. But first of all, I thought it was his communication um, and his aggressive approach to trying to win the games. Why did you not captain Australia in Test cricket? Or is that a I think the off-field stuff might have had something <laughs> to do with that. Um, I might have been OK tactician on the field, off-field, but um, I was probably a bit of a liability, <laughs> shall we say. Now, so I mentioned that your reputation as a former England captain is a high one. I think it's fair to well, say. I, I think at the end. Of no, it. well, <laughs> the reason I get to that is because, you know, if if I look at your record, which is played 45 as captain, won 17, lost 15. If Joe Root is played 42, won 23, lost 15. So his win percentage is much better than yours. But I think by common consent would not be regarded as good, as good an England captain as you, although his time is not yet done. So the question is, can we judge a captain on results alone? I think it's the most important thing. People who sit here in these stands when we do have crowds and pay good money, they don't want to leave the day going, Joe Root had a great game as captain, but we lost. They want their team to win. So Joe Root's stats, I think he la he's on the fourth best England captain win percentage. He only has W.G. Grace, Douglas Jardine and Mike Brearley ahead of him. And you should be judged on your win-loss because if he was losing games, we would be sure to be bringing that up in that win percentage. So I think Joe Root's doing a fine job. He's won six of his last six games that he's captain. The game he didn't do here with was Ben Stokes' captain and they lost. But obviously, you are judged by more than that. You know, you've got to try and make the team better somehow as a leader. What's the saying? The whole has to be greater than the sum of its parts. And as Imran said on that good documentary, cricket is a unique game. It's not like football where the manager sets you up and puts you out there. Cricket, once you're out there, the coaches... I know it's changing now, which we'll come on to, but I still think there's one person in charge, and there is nothing better than a captain doing something tactically or some bit of man management or making a cricketer better than a, someone in the stands watching or us up on the up there in the commentary box and watching a tactical change and seeing it working. Cricket is a unique game for captaincy. R Richie Benno said it was 90% luck, 10% skill, captaincy. But he added, don't try it without the 10%. I mean, it's an interesting quote because that implies two things. One, that it's not insignificant, captaincy in cricket, that it, it does have an effect. But that also there's a large element of, of, of luck involved. Do we overplay? Um, the impact that a captain can have in cricket or not? I don't think so. I think there's a few things that are really important with captaincy, and NASA speaks about the crowd here. One is the style of play that the team plays. Two is the way they conduct themselves as a group and how they play the game. But I think more importantly, the captaincy should be able to get the best out of individuals. So there are times when, you know, it's easy to throw the ball to a Ben Stokes or someone like that, but if someone's not having a great day or the team's not having a good day, how do you turn that around? So that's why, as a captain, you want to have those X-factor type players in your team that can inspire others. Because there's not many players like a, a Flintoff that can drag the team with you. Now, he's not the captain, but he's a big leader and inspiration to the team. 
So the captain is to make sure he gets the best out of Andrew Flintoff all the time and allows him to be Andrew Flintoff, not be somebody else. So allowing people to be themselves, to express themselves and for the team to play in a manner that's exciting brand of cricket. And yes, there are moments where a captain can win you the game through tactical nous. But there's a lot of things that go outside of that. Things like one of the hardest things we all had is, is telling someone that you might know really well, your 12th man, we're leaving you out today. Now, a simple thing like that, I would like the captain to always do that. But be honest with the player. Because if you're honest with the player all the time, this is the reason I'm leaving you out. Because I think your consistency or whatever the reason might be, not the team balance, that's why you're out. That's an easy cop out for me. I think the captain should always say, this is why you're left out. And that creates, they might not like what they hear, but it creates respect for the captain and a trust and an honesty for the captain from all the players that they'll play for you because they trust you, you're honest with them, and they know that you've got their back. Then no matter what, you've got their back. And I think that's really important to the captaincy. And that'll shine through from when you play the game. You can see the energy that the team has and they're playing for the captain. I might ask why people want to become captains. You very rarely see anybody turn down the leadership of, of their country when it's offered. I can't think of a, an instance in recent times when that has happened. There's been so a few it, reluctant ones, uh, like an Alan yes, Border. Yes, an Alan Border reluctant captain. But it's clearly, therefore, something that is coveted. People want to do it. But uh, it would be a fair <laughs> question to ask why, when you see the criticism. I mean, just take Azhar Ali, for example, in this week. Captaining Pakistan is a tough old gig. I, I think we're all aware of that. And the criticism that has come his way from losing a game that Pakistan ought to have won, from not being able to defend 277, the criticism, the stress, the pressure, the hassle. Why do people want to do it? Because it's all worth it. It's the best job in the world, being England cricket captain. It's the worst job in the world, as you know. I've seen you in press conferences. I've seen you resign that day in Antigua with tears in your eyes, as we all do in the end but it is the best job in the world. I think Mike Brearley wrote in his book, the, the time it hit him was when he, when he walked out afterwards and the bloke on the tannoy doesn't say anymore, that's who's saying England cricket captain or Mike Brearley, England cricket captain, it's someone else. And the people in the stands, the Barmy Army, are not singing Nasser Hussain's Barmy Army. They've moved on to Michael Vaughan's Barmy Army. It is the best job in the world, being England cricket captain, as far as cricketing job goes. You, you know, the decisions you make, you're always remembered. Wherever I go now, it's not necessarily saying ex-player, it's ex-England cricket captain, good or bad, and it is a fantastic job, and I would not swap it for any other job. If someone said you had your time again and you didn't have the captaincy, no way, best thing ever to do. And was there ever a stage in that four-year period? I mean, I, s I remember seeing you wandering at a hotel somewhere in, in Sri Lanka in Gaul. It was the combination of uh, tricky results for a while, and personal form or a lack of personal form. You know, I saw you one night looking like death, really. And, <laughs> you know, we all try and arm around the shoulder, gather round. But there are times when you feel like the weight of the world is on your shoulders as a captain. But was there a time when you thought, I just want to jack this in? Uh, then, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Um, it does get on top of you and you need good people. You need people you trust, all the stuff that Shane said. The flip side is that people want honest captains, but also at that stage of my captaincy career, I need an honest appraisal from someone like you, who I've known from England schoolboy days. You wouldn't, there'd be people that you go and see that would tell you what you wanted to hear because you're captain. There were people you want to go and see that will tell you the honest truth. You know, Nas, you're doing okay. Nas, you're not doing okay. And I knew you were one of those people. So you just need a bit of reassurance. You know, as an England captain, and this is the slight difference between being an England captain in our era and being maybe a Steve War, Mark Taylor, whatever, because you have McGrath and Warren, and this is no excuse, you are winning a lot of games. And that's the 90% luck that Richie Benno, if you are captain and you have McGrath one end and Warren the other, that's the 90% luck you are given. And you are therefore winning more games and therefore you are under less pressure. If you're Azhar Ali, if you're Nasser Hussain, if you're Michael Atherton, just by definition of the side you're playing in, and against. You're losing a lot of games. The English press, the English media get on your case. You get on your own case. Your family will be concerned about you. And it becomes a tough job, but you still know it's a great job and you have to get through those periods. Just to, just to go back to yeah. those stats that you said at the start, Ath, I always believe it's like a cricketer. If Once you finish your career and you're walking down the street, 
most people aren't going to say, Athers, we loved you as a cricketer because you averaged 42.35 and made 8,000 runs. They're not going to remember that. They're going to remember the way you played the game. So as a captain, I don't think the percentages are that important, the win-loss ratio. I think it's the way the team plays. Winning World Cups. England have won their first ever World Cup under Owen Morgan. So I don't know what his win-loss record is, but I know England one-day side are the best one-day side in the world because Morgan's got their players playing a great brand of cricket. And they all play for him. You can tell they play for him. They trust him. And it's the same, with, I think, in Test Match Arena. You, you look at the team and you go, we're proud of that team. We love the way they play the game. Not how many tests they've won or lost or anything like that. I know the wins and losses go against your name as a captain and that'll be there forever to say that they lost this many or won that many. But I still believe you want the public and everyone to be proud of the team and the way you play the game is the most important thing. And it's the same as an individual player. People don't remember your stats, but they remember the way you play the game. Did you change a game? Did you deliver when your team needed you? And I think that's the most important thing.